Mick to the southpaw under center. Whitaker to his left. Russ dropping back, looking for Gray. One throw, one catch. Touchdown, Reggie Gray. Mick to plenty of time. Looking deep downfield. He's got it! Touchdown, Sabercats! Welcome to another season of Sabercats Weekly right here on Comcast Sportsnet. I'm Chris Townsend. Well, the goal is still the same with the Sabercats. It's all about winning the championship. And they open the season up in Portland with an impressive win. Coming up next, we'll go over the highlights with the head coach, Darren Arbett. And we'll also speak with one of the top offensive linemen in the game, Rich Wranglin. That's all coming up next right here on Sabercats Weekly. Well, of course, we're very excited to be back here on Sabercats Weekly for the 2014 season as we're looking for another arena football championship. And we're always joined by a man who owns the franchise. He's the head coach and he's also a Hall of Famer, Darren Arbett. Coach, welcome back to the show. Oh, thanks, Chris. How fired up are you for this 2014 season? Because I know you've got one heck of a team. Really excited about the guys that we have as well as the coaches. Our staff did a great job putting the team together. And what did it mean to you to start the season on the road, go up to Portland? Now, they're a new franchise, but what did it mean to go up and start the season on the road and get a win? Our guys wanted to hit someone else. We were tired of hitting each other, and they showed up and played very well and got it done. And how excited are you to have Reggie Gray on the team with Russ Mickna? One play, and you got a touchdown. Yeah, touchdown, Reggie. He uh, does a nice job making people miss, and Got into the end zone a lot last night. And then you have talked to us for years about getting stops. Portland would then come out. It would be fourth and three, and your defense would get the stop. Proud of the defense. It's something that uh, we wanted to do. We got people in third and fourth down last year. We just didn't get off the field, and they did a great job finishing it up and getting off the field. Mickton dropping back from the 11. Got a little time. Throwing. End zone. Caught. Touchdown. And then Russ Mickna, your quarterback, would roll a little bit left and hit Rod Harper there coming back across for the touchdown, and now you got it rolling. Russ has great feet. Rod Harper is one of the best, I think, in the Arena League this year, and you're going to see he made a nice catch there for a touchdown. And then we see fourth down again, fourth and 15, and Thomas is now running it. We know this quarterback can run it, but then again, when you got that monster, Huey Whitaker, what a great open field tackle to be able to get your offense back to football. Huey just makes big plays, and Thomas, he can really run. Darren Thomas can, can run with that football, and Huey made a great play to stop him and turn the ball over for us. And then Reggie Gray with the quick out powder, about four yards, and, and you got another score, and that puts it at 20-7. to seven. Reggie has a lot at the top end of the route, and he can sit you down. and just He's so quick, and he gets out of the break, and nice touchdown. And then all of a sudden, I almost fell off the couch because I saw you go for a field goal. Because normally, Coach, you never go for field goals. I'm like, well, it's first game of the year. You missed the extra point on the, on the very first drive. But Nick Pertwee with about 24-yard field goal, what were you thinking there? You know, the back and forth games, I'll go for it on fourth down if they're scoring on us and we're scoring on them because you don't want to kick a field goal and go down four. So that game, I felt our defense was playing great. It was going to put us up two scores, so I went for the field goal. Gray, motions left slot. Mikna flags down, free play. Mikna going to air one out. Got Gray, wide open, end zone, right side, caught, touchdown. So we saw Harper get deep, and then after this, we see Reggie Gray beat the DB, just flat out beat him deep for the, about a 34-yard touchdown. The speed that you have with the wide receivers, Coach, in at least in week one, looks very impressive. Yeah, Reggie can run. Everyone in the league knows that. Playmaker of the year last year in this league. And not only is he fast, Chris, but he's also very, very quick. And then Jason Willis with the touchdown in the back of the end zone was a four-yard TD. I mean, you just had wide receivers. Russ had multiple guys open on, it seemed like, every single play. Jay Will has really stepped his game up and made a nice move, got to the back of the end zone, easy catch. Little pitch, going to run left, rumble, bounce, and stretch into the end zone. J.J. Payne, touchdown Sabercats. Now we know you love running the football, and in the third quarter starting out, J.J. Payne with the six-yard TD. You love that big back, that big physical back that has that no nose for the end zone. Of course, with that touchdown, would make it 44-27. J.J. can run the football, and that's something in the offseason we really worked on. And 
we wanted a back that can run with the football, and we have one now. Not only can he run with the football, but he can catch it coming out of the backfield also. If Russ doesn't make it coming out, uh, out of the half, how is Russ doing? Russ is okay. He's okay. You know, I just didn't want to put him in there. A little woozy, just made sure he was okay. Have a lot of confidence in Nathan, and you saw Nathan came in and played very, very well. Do we think Russ will be playing this next week against Philadelphia? I anticipate that, yes. And tell us about this Nathan Stanley, because he was very impressive, Coach, in his debut for the Sabercats. Smart, can throw the football, understands the game, loves the game of football, and his teammates following him follow him. He's, he's a big time team guy. Final in this one, 64-34. So a great win, especially on the road to start out the season. Russ, 165 yards, five touchdowns. Stanley, he threw for three touchdowns. So eight touchdowns total from your quarterbacks. I think coming out of this one, you got to like that you got depth at the number one position in the league. If I don't say something about those offensive linemen, they did a tremendous <laughs> job blocking. Those guys work hard. They're the heartbeat of this, this football team along with that D-line, and I'm just proud of the whole team. They played hard. Well, I'm going to try and make it easy on you this year, Coach, because last year we didn't get to an offensive lineman later in the year here in Sabercats Weekly. They weren't happy about it. So you know what we're going to do for the big boys? We're going to lead off this year's Sabercats Weekly with an offensive lineman. We're going to keep your guys happy. Yeah, I want to keep them all happy. Like I said, the defensive line and the offensive line are the heartbeat of the team. But no doubt, great first one of the season. It really was, Chris. Wardrobe has been provided by Casera Clothers. One of the best attractions at every Sabercats home game is the cheerleading squad, the Saber Kittens. To make this exclusive team, the girls had to endure a vigorous audition process. Earlier this year, our cameras were there on the final day of auditions to see who would make the cut. We had a wonderful group come out this year. We're very excited. Um, very talented dancers and they're all beautiful, so it's going to be really hard making decisions. We started off, we had a little over 100 girls. We made a first cut yesterday, and then we ended up with 30 girls that we brought to interview today. And we need 20 on the squad. We have um, 11 returning, so we'll see what happens. It's a really, really, really great organization and a fun organization to be a part of, so I'm privileged and honored to have been called back today. I'm nervous, I'm excited, and really, really, really excited to find out who um, the team is going to be for this 2014 season. This is my third time, and it was really exciting, just as exciting as the past two times. It is my first time trying out, and I'm very nervous and very excited. I was on it last season, so I think that it's more nerve-wracking just because you have to show that you've been improving and you're pretty much better than the season before. This process has been amazing. Um, this is my first time trying out to be a Sabre Kitten. It's been a lot of fun. Um, it's definitely tested my nerves and just testing how much I could really take with this process, and it's been really positive so far. So I'm hoping that that positivity will string through today. In order to become a Sabre Kitten, the girls not only had to go through a dance routine for the judges, they also needed to sit down for a panel interview. One, two, like kind of how to be part of a team. I mean, I was, I danced through high school and our dance team was always more like a family. I'm really nervous about the interview part because I'm used to dancing, I'm used to performing, and I know how to handle nerves in that area, but interviewing is new to me and I feel that is where I could grow the most from being part of this team. I was extremely nervous about the interview process today just because we get some hard questions thrown at us and you know you always want to be perfect and on point on what you're saying. I see them nervous. A lot of times veterans seeing them the second year, I see them not nervous the second time around. So I know they gain confidence throughout the year. And it's one of the most exciting jobs a girl can have in their 20s and 30s sometimes. 
To see who made this year's Saber Kitten Squad, be sure to visit thesanjosesabercats.com and be sure to catch your favorite Saber Kitten at every Saber Cats home game this season. Week 1's offensive player of the game was wide receiver Reggie Gray. Gray posted six catches for 102 yards to go along with four touchdowns, propelling San Jose to the victory over the Portland Thunder. His chemistry with quarterback Russ Mickna helped San Jose get off to a fast start in the Week 1 victory, as the two connected for three first-half touchdowns. Offensive player of the game has been brought to you by Fries.com. Week 1's defensive player of the game was defensive back David Hyland. Hyland intercepted a pass, his first with San Jose, and the 18th pass of his career, and also added four and a half total tackles and a pass defense. In his first game as a member of the Sabercats, Hyland also recorded 72 yards on four kickoff returns. The defensive player of the game has been brought to you by Fries.com. Well, we finally got him here on Sabercats Weekly. Rich Wranglin, who's been one of the top linemen in the Arena Football League, he now joins us here. And by the way, I want to say thank you for coming on because if people don't know, last year the offensive line boycotted the show because all we did was quarterbacks <laughs> and receivers and the big guys weren't happy about that. that so awesome. that's why we're, we're leading off with you this season to, to have s s some good camaraderie with the offensive line. Well, I appreciate it, Chris, and on behalf of the O-line, we appreciate it as well, the gesture. Yeah, so you're our lead-off guy, so we're not gonna we're not gonna fool around. It's great to have you back, by the way. Thank you, thank you very much. Glad to be here. And I, and I remember when you left for the Kansas City Chiefs, it was like, no, not Rich, don't let him go. So you've been back and forth a couple times. It's been an interesting experience. For yes, you. definitely, definitely. It's been bittersweet. I've been, you know, highs and lows. It was really good just to see the other side and um, to go in the NFL and you know and kind of represent the Arena League and the SaberCats positively. You know, you leave Kansas City. Now, obviously, you want to stay in the NFL. We, we all get it. But how great is it for you that there's always a spot here for you back in San Jose with the Sabercats and Darren Arbett? Well, it feels good, man. I mean, as long as you compete hard and you're at the top of your game, I mean, there's always a spot for you at Sabercats. It's a little hard here, you know, because uh, they don't play any games. But it feels good always being able to come back. Yeah, talk about that competition that's in this locker room because this locker room is truly a locker room that people talk about one thing. It's about winning the championship, and everybody needs to be pulling on the same rope or you're not going to be here. Yes, definitely. Uh, nothing is given to you here. You have to take everything, and uh, they treat this like this is like the most professional place I've ever played for. You hold to a very high standard here, and you have to really compete, and you have to be at the top of your game. You have to work out. You can't take anything for granted here. You talked about the offensive line. You like being the enforcer. You oh, like being man. the tough guy. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. You need that on the team. You need that on the team. And the O-line has to be the, the heart and the dogs on your team. And we are. We mean business. Because it's a little bit different when you play in the Arena League because the game is all about throwing the football. Mm -hmm. You don't run it very much. And I know offensive linemen, you love to run block and you love to take guys down. But when you talk about being enforcer, how are you an enforcer when you're always in pass protection mode? It's about the finish. You know, at first, you know, you're pass protecting, you're making sure you got your fit, you're making sure he's not beating past you, but we always teach here to finish, and we're, we're throwing guys and chucking guys at the end, and we're just making them know, like, look, Bertie, you're not even close to the quarterback, so don't even try it, and you're not, it's going to be a long day. And how's it blocking for Russ, Mickna? Oh, I love it, man. Russ, Russ gets that ball out, so you can really take chances and really try to impose your will on people, and uh, so I love Russ. Is it a little different having a left-handed quarterback versus a right-handed? Yeah, it's a little different, but Russ, Russ does a good job of keeping in the pocket and just keeping everything nice. Now, you want to do television. You have done television. You've yes, been sir. on camera. You've been off camera. You've done the video editing. When it's all said and done, you see yourself stay, staying in TV? Well, definitely. If I could ever look as good as you, I, I'll stay in it forever, man. <laughs> Come but, on, um, man. With that smile, are you kidding me? <laughs> I got a little something, but uh, definitely TV is one of my passions, man. I mean, every aspect of it from the camera work and the lighting and just all the, the it's really like a family. It's like a group, you know, mm -hmm. it's just kind of like a team, you know, it's not one guy. I mean, you're the quarterback, you're the man, but there's a lot of people behind the scenes helping you out. And I just enjoy the whole process. I can see turning on the TV and seeing, seeing you be the color guy, color analyst for a football game. I can see that. I got a lot of work to do. I got a lot of work to do, but it'll be something I'll be very interested in in the future. And you got your kids here in town, so that's got to be nice. They're going to be able to be there for the home opener on Sunday? Uh, yes, yes, definitely, definitely. I'm glad to see those little faces when I, when I do something or Daddy does something good. They're always smiling at me, so that's always great. Yeah, it's always good to have them in town. It always just makes you feel whole versus when they're not here, it's tough on the season. Yeah, it helps you get away, too, you know, because you can't be thinking football 24-7. So 
sometimes it's good to have the little faces to, to, to distract you. Well, I think we did it right this year leading off on Sabercats Weekly. Having an offensive lineman there, so we're all good, right? No boycott, linemen and everybody. No boycott. The treaty's been signed. I mean, we're all good this, this year. Well, so, Russ, everybody always talks about the quarterback. You want me to wait till like, mid-season to finally get to him? Yeah, let everybody wait for him. He's a prima donna. <laughs> He'll be all right. <laughs> we appreciate the time. It's great to have you back, and good luck for the Thank 2014 you, appreciate campaign. appreciate you. This week's Offensive High School Player of the Week is Joey Wood, a running back from Las Gatas High School against North Salinas. Joey exploded for 313 yards on 28 carries and had six rushing touchdowns. He also added a 60-yard touchdown catch and an impressive 59-34 win for the Wildcats. This week's Defensive Player of the Week is Jacob Good, linebacker at Westmont High School. During the Warriors' 52-0 route of the San Jose Bulldogs, Jacob tallied 10 tackles, seven of which were solo. Jacob also amassed an amazing three sacks for minus 15 yards in the win for Westmont. This week's high school Ironman is Isaiah Nash, a running back and linebacker for Menlo Atherton High School. Isaiah, an amazing performance for his MA Bears as he rushed for 232 yards and two touchdowns to go on top of his 46-yard touchdown return on an interception as Menlo Atherton bests South San Francisco 31-19. Sabercats High School Players of the Week is brought to you by Dr. Sharma, South Bay Orthopedic and Sports Medicine. Hey Sabercats fans, this is Russ Mickna, your quarterback. I'm originally from the Chicago area and went to Western Illinois University. I want to bring another Arena Bowl championship back to San Jose. Let's go Cats! The Hall of Famer joins us once again, the head coach and owner of the San Jose Sabercats, Darren Arbett. And coach, before we start talking about Philadelphia and the home opener, I know the home opener always means a lot to you. But you've made some changes to the coaching staff, and the one guy you bring back is a fan favorite, played at San Jose State, helped you win championships. You've been battling against him in Arizona. You bring him back home, Omar Smith. What did that mean to you to bring back your former player? Love Omar Smith. One of the best Sabercats to ever play the game here. And the thing about Omar, not only was he a great player, he's a great coach right now for us. And you see coaches in this league where they may be a defensive guy and then now they switch over to the offensive guy or vice versa. Why does that happen in the Arena Football League? Omar's a football coach. There's a lot of good football coaches in this league and Omar's one of them. And when you're a defensive coordinator, you have to stop the offense. Mm -hmm. So he's seen everything that uh, offense can do. So he knows it. And, and that's why when I gave him the call, I said, hey, you know, why don't you come over here and do this? And he had never done it before, but he's doing a tremendous job. And obviously, when you talk about a great coach, you're one of the greats that have ever played in this league. you got the Hall of Fame ring on. And you look at this season. When you think about this season, what does this season mean for Darren Arbett in 2014? You know, I was telling CBS when I did the interview with them before the game, it's, you know, something you do for 20 years, and San Jose is always, they, they talk about that top team, and, and now they're not doing that anymore. This season's important to me. I don't want to just be a, a, a team that has a lot of talent and, and win a lot of football games. I want to be that team that everyone talks about, and we're playing in that game every year. When you bring guys in, and you still, let's face it, you still can get the best guys in this game. There's no question about it. Everybody wants to come and play here. But you need the right players here. You need guys that are coming who want to do one thing, and that's win an Arena Football League championship. How tough is that in the offseason to make sure you know you're getting the right guys to bring in this very locker room? You have to be honest with yourself. And you have to look at your team and evaluate it and be very, very honest. Because, Chris, you get into liking this guy because he works hard at this. But, you know, your 54 has to be better than that 67 or you have to coach it through. It's not only the players, it's also the coaches. You have to look at it that way. So, like I said, I, I'm excited about this. I think we have a great opportunity in front of us and we're going to give it everything we have. And I know one thing we're all going to be fired up for is this Sunday, the home opener. Philadelphia is coming to town. We know there's a lot of history between these two franchises. But there's just something about the Sabercats fans, far different than a lot of teams in this league. What's that home opener? You've done a lot of them, but what's that home opener like for you every single year? Love the home opener. And it's against Philly, who came here and flat out embarrassed us last year, Chris. And I know Peyton Manning didn't want to say that word, embarrassed, but I was embarrassed 
the way we played and the players were embarrassed the performance they put on and and I know I didn't do a good job coaching that week and and, and it's a great game to start off with in a team that they definitely have our attention. And they're definitely a team that you're looking at as one of the better teams will have a shot at going after the Arena Bowl title. They've been the two straight Arena Bowls. I mean, what more can you say about them? They're a good football team. Well, Coach, on Sunday, the SAP Center is going to absolutely be rocking for the home opener against Philadelphia. And glad to see you again the first of many Sabercats weeklies right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Hey, thanks, Chris. Well, we've had a great start to the season. I can't wait for Sunday at 5 o'clock, the home opener against the Philadelphia Soul at the SAP Center. Tickets are still available. Come out and support your San Jose Sabercats. Of course, we'll have all the highlights for you next week right here on Sabercats Weekly. We'll see you next time. Sabercats Weekly has been brought to you by Dr. Sharma, South Bay Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, Casera Clothers, and Fries.com.